uh, you see, I, I don't have a career. I'm not planning now I should do a documentary. I do whatever comes with, with the most urgency at me. And it's like burglars at night. You hear something stirs in your kitchen and you, you wake up, it's three in the morning and you stagger out and there are five burglars. But one of them comes swinging at you. So you better deal with that one first. So, and that's how it happens with my films. I, I have the feeling that destiny, uh, in a way, has dealt you a very bad deck of cards. It does not exonerate you. And, and when I talk to you, it does not necessarily mean that I have to like you but I respect you and you are a human being and I think human beings should not be executed as simply as that. Right. When I come in and when I speak with Michael Perry who was executed eight days later, I, I come in with a fairly clear vision where I want to, to take the conversation, but I never know would he accept it, would he not um, go into some other direction. So ultimately I'm unprepared. And you have to find the right tone with this man instantly, because you have hardly any time. And with others, the death row chaplain, I find the right tone with him, asking him all of a sudden uh, to tell me as an, about an encounter with a squirrel. Nobody would ask this, but he comes apart, he unravels, and all of a sudden you look deep inside of him. Life is precious, whether it's a squirrel, or a human being. So I will sometimes meditate on that experience, make a little noise, and the squirrels will take off and continue their life. But I cannot do that. For someone on the gurney, I cannot stop the process for them. My documentaries normally are feature films in disguise, not so much in, in Into the Abyss. When, you, when you're dealing with a man who is going to be executed eight days later, you, you have to be straightforward. But sometimes I invent, I stylize, I uh, fantasize, I uh, invent dreams, and you, you just name it. Or in the film uh, in the Paleolithic Cave, all of a sudden there's a a chapter at the end about uh, um, albino, radioactive, mutant albino crocodiles, for God's sake. <laughs> I'm going completely wild and I take my audience along into, into a world of sheer poetry and fantasy. And they accept it and they love it. And it, it's a documentary, quote unquote. So I would only speak of documentaries in quotes. And certain things I know should not be touched um, as me being a movie maker shouldn't be touched. And it has to do with life, pura vida. For example, when I travel on foot, I wouldn't have a camera with me because uh, uh, the world itself uh, uh, in, in a way uh, reveals itself to those who travel on foot but you must not be armed with a rucksack and your tent and your sleeping bag and your protection. If you travel on foot, uh, the world opens itself and not to the filmmaker, it's to the, to the man, to the human being. Pura vida, as the Mexicans would say, pure life, but also the rawness of life. You cannot learn technical things from me you better sign up at your local film school. It's more about a way of life and about an intensity of life and having a vision and reading and traveling on foot and learning how to uh, forge a shooting permit, documents. How do you forge it credibly? How do you open a, a safety lock with uh, little tools and things like that? So, and, I would give only very general advice, uh, and that means um, 
Stick to your vision no matter what. And don't be afraid to live your dreams. So whatever films you are making, that's your business. I don't want to see any clone of myself out there ever. But you go out and uh, try to be self-reliant and make the films you have to make and just go and don't be afraid.